of those stories which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has documented within his eternal book, the Quran, for us to benefit from till the end of time is the story of the community of Saba. So powerful and profound was this story that there is a chapter in the Quran named after it, chapter 34, Surah to Saba, the chapter of Saba. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, لَقَدْ كَانَ لِسَبَئٍ فِي مَسْكَنِهِمْ آيَةٍ Allah says, certainly there was a sign for the people of Saba in their homeland. What is the nature of the story of the people of Saba? Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praise the kingdom of Saba at least for a particular period of time? And why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us that there was an ayah, a sign, and in another ayah, ayat, many signs in the story of Saba? What made this story so special and unique that Allah chose to make it everlasting? This is what we shall be finding out today if Allah gives us life until the end of the khutbah bi-idhnillahi ta'ala. Saba is the name of one of the kingdoms of Yemen that existed a long time. And Balqis, the famous queen who existed during the time of Prophet Sulaiman sallallahu alayhi wasallam, she was part of this kingdom in one duration or another. And this was a kingdom that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had blessed in one of the most breathtaking and jaw-dropping of ways. In every sense of the word, in terms of dunya, in terms of prophets, in terms of the air, in terms of rivers, in terms of fruits, Allah had blessed the kingdom of Saba like something you and I have never seen before. Messengers were sent to the people of Saba, reminding them that all you need to do is benefit and enjoy the khair, the goodness Allah has given you whilst thanking Allah for what He has given you and staying away from haram. And they did that for a certain period of time. But then with the passage of time, the people of Saba began to change and thus the favor and the ni'mah, the blessings of Allah upon them also began to change. Imam Ahmad narrates in his Musnad on the authority of Abdullah ibn Abbas that a man came to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam asking him about Saba. What is it the name of? A country, a land, a man. Yes'alu an Saba. Ahuwa rajul? Ahuwa amra'ah? Ahiyya amra'ah? Ahuwa ard? What is Saba? He said. Is it the name of a man? Is it the name of a woman? Is it the name of a land? And the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam said to him, Bal huwa rajulun walad ashrah. Sittatun minhum fil Yemen. Wa arbaatun minhum fil Sham. He said, No. Saba is the name of a man who had ten children. Six of them stayed in Yemen and four of them went to Asham. We are speaking about Arabs. We are speaking about the origins of the pure Arabs, the third category of Arabs, Al Arab Al Aribah. They come from this man, Saba. He said, Six of the children of Saba were in Yemen. This was their homeland. And they were Mathij and Kindah and Al Azd and Al Ash'ariyun and Himyar and Anmar. And he said, as for the four from the children of Saba who went to Asham, Great Assyria, they were Lachm and Judam and Amilah and Ghassan. And they were all living in Yemen once upon a time. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the dam to break and to destroy the people of Saba, as we shall find out, they were dispersed and scattered. Six of the children of Saba stayed in Yemen. And four of them migrated to Asham. And therefore, if somebody asks you, when did the Arabs first appear in the land of Asham, Palestine, Jordan, and Lebanon, and Syria? We say to them, they migrated there after the dam of Saba broke down and they were dispersed and the Arabs made their way to Asham. And these were not the direct children of Saba, by the way, as Imam Ibn Kathir, he said. These are the descendants of Saba, whether they were his grandchildren or further down the line. What do we know about Saba? Let us begin our journey for today. 
And by Allah, dear brothers and sisters, for those who are patient and those who are grateful, you will realize that this story is a life-changing one. Allah said, لَقَدْ كَانَ لِسَبَعٍ فِي مَسْكَنِهِمْ آيَةٍ جَنَّتَانِ عَنْ يَمِينٍ وَشِمَالٍ Allah said, certainly there was a sign in the homeland for the people of Saba. Allah said, we gave them two huge gardens, two meadows, one to the right and one to the left. All they would see is green landscape. All they would breathe is the freshest and purest of air. All they would drink is the purest of water. And all what they experienced during their travels was safety and security. It was a completely sterile, disease-free environment. The trees were so dense. Rivers were gushing through these two gardens of the people of Saba. This was Saba. And they had a dam. They had a dam that was built holding that back the water and accessing it as they wished and therefore they were hardly reliant upon rainwater at all allah said it was baldatun tayyibah a pure land a beautiful land two gardens one to the right and one to the left and all that was required of them dear brothers and sisters was to eat from the fruit of their lord and to thank him their messenger said kulu min rizqi rabbikum mashkuru lah they said to them, eat from the provisions that Allah has given you. Enjoy them and thank Allah. You have a blessed land, a sweet land and a very forgiving Lord. Could anybody wish for anything more than that? A land that wants to give and give and you have a Lord who wants to forgive and forgive. Paradise on earth. This was a kingdom of heaven in dunya. Imam al baghawi narrates in his tafsir that Muqatil and As-Suddi, they both said, كَانَتِ الْمَرْأَةُ تَحْمِلُ الْمِكْتَلَ عَلَى رَأْسِهَا فَتَمُرُّ بِالْجَنَّتَيْنِ فَيَسْقُطُ فِي مِكْتَلِهَا مِنَ الثِّمَارِ وَالْفَوَاكِهِ حَتَّى يَمْتَلِئْ مِنْ غَيْرِ أَنْ تَمَسَّ شَيْئًا بِيَدِهَا They say that a woman would carry a basket on her head and she would make her way through the gardens and the basket would be empty. But by the time she would walk out of the other side of the garden, the basket would be filled with all types of fruits without her needing to reach out for anything. Ripe fruits, dear brothers and sisters, falling all over the place. Kingdom of heaven, paradise on earth. Allah gave them so much. Just show gratitude to Allah and be patient and resist haram. And they did that for some time, but then they began to change. They got a little bit comfortable. In fact, they got too comfortable. And they began to doubt Allah. And the worship of God Almighty Allah became the worship of the sun. And they began to challenge their messengers. Allah said, فَأَعْرَضُ They turned away. They denied my favors. So what was the outcome? فَأَرْسَلْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ سَيْلَ الْعَرِبِ Allah says, I gave permission for the dam to break open and we sent upon them the flood. The dam collapsed. And torrents of water now were gushing onto their lands, flattening their crops and uprooting their trees and turning sweet fruit so bitter and turning security and safety into fear and hardship. Everything was destroyed within the blink of an eye because a'radu they turned away. Allah said, and we replaced them with the two gardens, the two beautiful gardens that they had once upon a time. We replaced them with two other gardens. But what were their characteristics? Ya Allah, listen and compare. Two gardens of bitter fruit. And ethyl, meaning tamarisks, low quality trees, thorny food, وَشَيْءٍ مِنْ سِدِرٍ قَلِيلٍ A few low trees here and there. That was the end of the civilization of Saba. And this was when the children, the ten children of Saba, they dispersed into the land. Allah says, ذَلِكَ جَزَيْنَاهُمْ بِمَا كَفَرُوا 
وَهَلْ نُجَازِي إِلَّا الْكَفُورِ We compensated them with this because they were ungrateful, because they disbelieved. And this is how we behave with everybody who is ungrateful, Allah said. وَهَلْ نُجَازِي إِلَّا الْكَفُورِ And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the ayah after this draws our attention to yet another blessing that he had given the people of Saba. Listen to this. وَجَعَلْنَا بَيْنَهُمْ أَهْلْ سَبَعْ وَبَيْنَ الْقُرَى الَّتِي بَارَكْنَا فِيهَا الشَّامِ قُرًا ظَاهِرًا وَقَدَّرْنَا فِيهَا السَّيْلِ وَقَدَّرْنَا فِيهَا السَّيْرِ Allah says subhanahu wa ta'ala and between the people of Yemen listen to this beauty that they had before the destruction and between the people of Yemen and the people of Sham that land that we have blessed Allah said between these destinations we had placed cities Quran Zahira cities that were visible cities that could easily be seen what does that mean the people of Saba like everybody else they needed to travel up and down the country for business reasons but their business route was very different subhanallah they had service stations from Yemen all the way to Asham much like our service stations that we have on the M4 and the M5 but these service stations of Saba were very different it wasn't just a Costa coffee and a burger and a bed and breakfast Allah said Quran Zahira we had placed cities as stations so when they were traveling from Asham to Yemen and Yemen to Asham, they would walk out of their home, dear brothers and sisters, without any luggage. No rucksacks, no packing. They didn't need to. They would leave their home and enter a city, eat and drink and rest. And then enter another city, eat and drink and rest till they arrive at Asham and they would do the same thing back. Quran Zahira, Allah said. Visible cities that could be seen. I hear you ask, what about navigation? Did they need maps? Did they know the way? Allah said, وَقَدَّرْنَا فِيهَا السَّيْرِ And we had made the distances from city to city measured and well known. They did not get confused. I hear you asking now about the security. Was there any fear to travel in the morning or the night? Allah said to them, سِيرُوا فِيهَا لَيَالِيَا وَأَيَّامًا آمِنِينَ Travel. Make your travel in the morning or in the night if you wish, you will be completely secure. Security, food, drink, land, beautiful air, money, water, everything man could wish for in the life of this world. But however, they became bored with the favor of Allah. This was the reality. They became tired with the goodness Allah gave them. And they made a very strange dua that you will not believe when you hear it. What did they say? فَقَالُوا رَبَّنَا بَاعِدْ بَيْنَ أَسْفَارِنَا They said, Oh our Lord, we ask you please to lengthen the distance during our travel. Make it long. In other words, Oh Allah, we're tired of this goodness you've given us. We want to we wanna carry bags. We want to travel long distances. And we want to be thirsty in the deserts. And we want to be scared like everybody else. We don't want this comfort. It's too much. Allah said, وَظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ They wronged themselves. And dear brother, dear sister, I know when you hear this request of the people of Saba, you may think to yourself, this is so strange. I say it is very strange, but it is not uncommon. And if you look around you very carefully, you will realize that there are some people you know who are doing exactly what the people of Saba did when they made that dua. Like who, Brother Ali? Like a man or a woman whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed him or her with marriage, a beautiful spouse, a handsome husband, a beautiful woman, a righteous individual, a God-fearing person. But this person chooses to pursue another relationship outside of the pale of marriage behind closed doors. That is a person who became bored with the favor of Allah. Like the people of Saba did. Or another person whom Allah has blessed with a steady income of halal, steady source of finance, halal. It may not be huge, but it is halal and it's enough for him and his family. But then he gets tired of it. So he decides to set up a brand new business of intoxicants, of smoke, of lounges, of zina and haram. Why did he do that? He was comfortable. Why did he do that? 
Yeah, he got bored with the favor of Allah. He got tired. He wanted something new. So what will be the fate of such people? It will be the exact same fate of the people of Saba. What was the fate of the people of Saba? فَجَعَلْنَاهُمْ أَحَادِيثٌ we made them into stories. Allah said we destroyed the people of Saba and we made them into a narration. What do you now see of Saba? What do you hear of Saba? Nothing. It's now become a tale that we discuss. فَجَعَلْنَاهُمْ أَحَادِيثٌ Allah said. وَمَزَّقْنَاهُمْ كُلَّ مُمَزَّقْ And we scattered them, dispersed them, disunited them with a major dispersion, Allah says, all over the world. They left Yemen. What used to be a unified kingdom of happiness and harmony, paradise on earth, became a smashed to pieces community, fragmented society, torn into groups and tribes traveling the world trying to find a new home. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concludes the story of Sabah telling us that not everybody will benefit from this story. Rather, there will be people who will walk out of the masjid or finish reciting the Qur'an and they will remain completely unchanged. He says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, in conclusion, إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِكُلِّ صَبَّارٍ شَكُورٍ Allah says, indeed, there are signs in this for every person who is patient and grateful. Allah tells you, these are the people who will benefit. These are the people who will cry when they hear the story of Saba. These are the people who will rush home to say, Ya Rabbi, what changes do I need to make? And what sins must I eliminate? Because I want to be grateful and patient. I don't want to have the outcome of the people of Saba. The story of Saba is a real life practical model. As for how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pays back a community or a country or an individual who misuses the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ignores giving thanks to him. However, when we look into the Quran, dear brothers and sisters, you will find that this story of Saba and their two gardens was not the only story mentioned. Rather, there are several other stories that seem to be identical, subhanAllah. Stories of other people who had gardens, they misused their property, misused their limbs, and thus Allah Almighty took away from them the gardens. We have in the Quran, the story of the man who had one garden. The story of the men who had two gardens, and the story of the community that had many gardens, and the outcome for every one of these stories was identical. As for the story of the man who had one garden, this is mentioned in Surah Al Qalam, chapter of Al Qalam. And what was the outcome of that story when he misused his blessings? Allah says a visitor from your Lord visited that garden when they were asleep and destroyed it. And that was the end of that garden. What about the story of the two gardens? That was the story of Saba that we just heard. But there is a second story of a person who had two gardens. This is in Surah Al-Kahf. And what was the outcome of that garden? Allah says, وَأُحِيطَ بِثَمَرِهِ His garden, his gardens were encircled with destruction. That was the end of that garden. What about the fourth story? The man who had many gardens. This was the story found in Surah Al-Shu'ara, the chapter of the poets where Allah Almighty speaks about the punishment of Fir'aun the Pharaoh. Allah says, فَأَخْرَجْنَاهُمْ مِنْ جَنَّاتِ وَعْيُونَ We expelled him and his community from many gardens and from many springs. Four gardens or four stories belonging to four different people in four different times. And the outcome of each and every one of these stories mentioned in the Qur'an was identical. Allah took away the property because of a sin that was involved. This, dear brothers and sisters, is the takeaway message we take from Surah Saba. Allah Ta'ala yudhibu ni'am bil ma'asi. Allah removes blessings of people through their sins. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he says in his Majmu' al-Fatawa, وَالْقُرْآنُ يَذْكُرُ فِي غَيْرِ مَوْضِعٍ أَنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى لَمْ يُهْلِكْ أَحَدًا وَلَمْ يُعَذِّبْهُ إِلَّا بِذَمْ 
He said the Quran mentions in more than one passage that Allah Almighty does not destroy communities, nor does He bring harm to individuals only when it is due to a sin. Therefore, beware, dear brother, dear sister. Revisit your transactions and your dealings at home and with your friends and your private affairs before you are forced to bid farewell to something you, de something you dearly love. Allah tells us that it is only the patient and it is only the grateful who will benefit from this story. Nobody else. And therefore, you may ask yourself, what is patience? So that I may be patient and to withhold the favors Allah has given me, my health, my sight, my hearing, my money, my children, my deen. What is patience? So that I keep them and they don't get taken away like the property of Saba was taken away from them. What is patience? The scholars, they say patience is of three categories. Patience, as-sabru ala al-ma'mur, as-sabru ala al-mahdhur, as-sabru ala al-maqdur. They say patience, category number one, is to show patience towards the obligations of Allah. Number two, to show patience towards the prohibitions of Allah, to stay away from them. Number three, patience towards qadr, the decrees of Allah that may bring you pain. That is patience. What is gratitude, somebody may ask. That is also of three types. Gratitude of the heart, so that you show Allah, I believe the favor is from you, nobody else. Gratitude of the mouth, so that you are always speaking about the favor of Allah, not your talents. Number three, gratitude of the limbs, so that you only use your body, your private parts, your hands, your eyes, your ears, your senses, in that which pleases Allah and does not anger Him. That is patience and this is gratitude. These are the people who benefit from the story of Saba. Dear brother, dear sister, a person who goes home tonight without rethinking his finances, his investments, his sources of income, has not shown patience or gratitude and therefore this person awaits the same fate as the people of Saba, he now awaits a flood. A person who goes home, dear brothers and sisters, after hearing the story, but does not rethink the relationships, his conversations, his observations, his glances, his hearing behind closed doors when nobody is looking, has not shown patience and has not shown gratitude and is awaiting a flood like the flood of the people of Saba. Sooner or later, a person who walks out of the masjid and he is yet to make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the number one priority in his or her life has not shown patience or gratitude. And this person is waiting for a flood, whatever the form of that flood may be, so that it may destroy the distractions in your life or mine till we go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a broken heart and crying eyes begging Allah at his doorstep for forgiveness. But we don't want to be like that person. We don't want to be an individual who waits for tumors and cancer and illness and loss of money and loss of loved ones to cause us to change and repent. We don't want to be like that person. We want to be an individual who sees the signs of Allah and to turn back to Allah with tawbah and repentance and a new page with our Creator willingly, voluntarily, without waiting for a calamity or a hardship to wake us up. Show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, dear brother, dear sister, that you have benefited from the story of Saba as was intended for you and I. And do this by starting a brand new page with Ar-Rahman and a brand new eagerness and enthusiasm to pursue the pleasure of Allah.